hey guys welcome to my youtube channel they gotta do the yeah yes <laughs> um so today i have my sister here jackie that will be joining Hi. us and today we have a topic in mind she doesn't know what it is as yet but i will go ahead and i'll introduce her just a little and i'll leave her speak about who she is first um like further so i'll let you know how me and jackie met so in 2018 19 i think it was 2019 i met jackie at a friend's event a women's event in the cultural center and we were basically assisting her with well this the person with her event yes. um and her and i started speaking and that's basically how it started we exchanged numbers and fast forward to now she participated yeah 2020 well actually before that when covid started she joined kingdom sisters and kingdom sisters is basically a women's empowerment spiritual group that we are part of and i'm the founder and she is one of the core whoop, whoop. yeah so she really has been putting in the extra work to help the vision come further so i thank god for her and thank god for just her being part of the kingdom work. I don't know if you guys can hear this. Hopefully it's not too loud. We're gonna have to check it out, but hopefully you can hear us very clearly in this recording. Yes. So, Jackie, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes, so my name is Jacqueline Martinborough, AKA Jackie, well not AKA, but better known as Jackie. Um, I was born on the beautiful island of St. Martin. I left to further my studies at the age of 17 to go to the Netherlands, mm -hmm. uh, to further my studies in social work. Um, while doing my bachelor's degree, so I obtained my associates while doing my bachelor's degree, I decided to take a break mm -hmm. to come back to St. Martin and to gain some working experience mm -hmm. because I had a bit of enough of school. So I just needed a break and for four and a half years, I obtained um, experience. My last um, job was as a social worker by the Sister Basilia Center working with handicaps mm -hmm. and then I decided okay now I feel the need to further my studies so I could really make the impact that I want to make. So I went back to the Netherlands um, to further my studies. Now I'm going into my last year and besides that I'm very passionate about the work that I do helping others helping those that are vulnerable mm -hmm. that is something that I'm very passionate about I am also I would call it a vulnerability activist yes. um, and that basically means is that I I encourage people to share their stories to make impact mm. that is something that I really love to do um, it's a, it's a passion that I developed over the past year, discovering myself and going on my self self development, self awareness mm -hmm, journey, mm -hmm. and 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 I felt like okay, in order to be my true authentic self, I also need to share the parts that not everyone speaks about, mm -hmm. you know, and just to inspire others that despite your shortcomings despite your setbacks you are still able to be mm, successful yes. you are still able to achieve greatness and so that is why i choose to share my story awesome so, so that's who i am jackie has a lot going on she does a lot and she's very vocal as she said about her vulnerability and one of the things that she has ongoing is her inst on her instagram page is profound moments where she talks about her story and her walk with God. She's a very powerful woman, a very spiritual woman, and very like a woman of God. Like she's a warrior. You don't want to see, but I think you want to see when Jackie goes and she goes in like warfare on your behalf. Like you, you'd be mind blown. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> that little compact person. Listen, ah. <laughs> full of power. But um, I'm going to transition into well, kind of talk about vulnerability, but okay so the topic is about basically sexual sexual sexuality within the, like the culture of sexuality within the caribbean okay interesting, yes so interesting. jackie did not know the topic and i'm going to explain no. you the reason why i brought it up so since i've been on the island do you know I don't know if that that has happened to you, but when you're working around, um, wherever you're working, and even if you're walking on the streets, um, you would get approached from men that would think it's appropriate to speak to you a certain way. Or 
you know like that kind of thing so recently i went through a situation that had me very uncomfortable and the reason too that i that really had me uncomfortable and i guess i didn't i didn't react the way that i should have and i don't know if it's because we're brainwashed to accept certain things and of course too there's two ways to those kind of situation um women we it happens a lot amongst us and it also happens to men as well and it, this is a topic that is not often um discussed. discussed and we can go even deeper if it if the conversation leads to that but this is what i would like for us to speak about today awesome so you jackie have you had that experience where you were approached inappropriately and um like how did you react to it definitely and i think that living in the caribbean we actually normalize certain things like we accept it so mm -hmm. we accept men talking to us any kind of how we accept the fact bound boundaries i think that our boundaries are very blurred mm -hmm. and that is because back home we never learned to be, be, be because it's a taboo yeah, and we yeah. don't talk about things mm -hmm. like up to now i never had the conversation i'm 30 years old and i never had a conversation about sex with my parents mm -hmm. up to now they have not spoken to me about it so in the caribbean how i grew up i have to speak about myself because i know that there are other people that grew up differently so yeah. i can't generalize it yeah. but what i've experienced is we don't talk about it we shun it and so when when it comes to boundaries etc etc um you don't really know how to um like share your boundaries with someone that is being inappropriate yes, yes. you are quicker to stay silent or give a body language that it is not acceptable than to be vocal about let it. me pause you right there yeah so um you said that when you were growing up you didn't have the sex talk with your parents and mm -hmm. i'm the same too and when i was growing up my sex talk my mom was all she told me don't have sex before marriage that was it and if you have sex with someone they're going to watch you some type of way oh i've been with this person already like so basically your value diminishes the time that you start having sexual in the court yes. intercourse yes. with a guy yes so um and another thing that you mentioned was the body language and i love mm -hmm. how you brought that up because as I mentioned earlier on, I went through a certain situation and the way I reacted, um, so I'm going to explain it, explain what it was. Mm -hmm. So basically is a friend that I've known for years, a family friend, and they, like I always used to talk to them and I was like, man, this is a very good family man. And whenever I'm around him and his family and his kids come around and he, like he's a very good provider and something happened, something traumatic happened to him and he switched right so just a little backstory because just to just to explain to you guys that kind of relationship that i have with him is never been inappropriate ever 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 boom now are you going sorry tell it so we know so now um i was around him and I, actually i was with a friend and he just happened to come around and i started talking to him because i i'm now on the island and i haven't seen him for a while and i was like hi long time i ain't see you you know blah, 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 blah. he said what are you doing here i was by the harbor and waiting for waiting for someone to come in with that friend so he was like what are you doing here i said i waiting for somebody he's like you waiting for someone i say yes he's like why you leave why are you waiting for someone um when you when the person should be the one coming to you and I said, yes, uh, he, they are coming to me. I said, I'm waiting for a guy. It was a joke, guys. I'm waiting for a guy, and um, my friend is waiting for a female friend. I was just talking. It was just saying, saying things for saying sake. And then he's like, oh. He started to speak to me inappropriately, period. And that had me such a, like, he went from me talking kissing this person to like talking about like my private and whatnot and i i was close to him when i was like he was in the car and i was like this and then when he said it i was like but why you why you, where this conversation coming from and then i moved from where he was and i went like closer to, uh, to the other friend and the friend that i was with his face like we, we we just stayed straight like but you could have seen the shock in his in his reaction and that made me very uncomfortable and when i got home 
I spoke to my mom about it. I explained her, but like in my mind, it's still replaying. Like, why would you speak to me like that? Nothing in our conversation um, would I give you the 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 openness to speak to me in that way and you speaking to me in that way makes them think that maybe you and i have something like why you so have a leeway to speak to me in that kind of um inappropriate uh, yeah manner and the thing is it caught me off guard and i'm a person i don't like altercations and whatnot and usually i react to things late but they can be trans transferred into another something and not everyone can like nib it in the butt not every woman or every man just talks like usually we just internet internalize it and not speak up about it and i know that's a struggle for me but it's crazy anything you would like to add because i know i said a lot <laughs> yeah so basically you were saying that you wasn't able to address it but what impacted you so that you felt like okay this is something i need to share this is something what are you interviewing you, me yeah so what <laughs> what what made you want to highlight this subject? um actually after i had this conversation i spoke to one of our sisters about it mm -hmm. and it was like it's crazy how the culture in st martin is it's something that um we like it's 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 kind of it's basically normalized yes and yesterday this morning I was talking to one of our sisters and one of the what I actually wanted to talk about I felt like this was confirmation for me to speak about it so basically she was working and someone um, touched her their ear in like just randomly she's like I didn't say anything I didn't do anything for them to think that it was okay, okay. like I didn't give you any advancement for you to be like okay me and you we we on that level like she didn't do anything like that and she didn't say anything when it happened but she spoke to someone about it and they told her you know tell the persons about her what happened but just like what she did is the same thing that i did and i and i recognized the the what's the word the trend yes i recognize the trend i recognize the action i recognize what she did was the same thing i did and that's not the only person that's done it and but but also so okay so in the states well in well i could say in the american culture yeah what i've noticed with this topic is that women are speaking up in the sense of they are saying regardless even if and i'm going to be extreme even if i walk the street naked does not give you the permission to approach me and want to say what you want to say and even want to do what you want to do if i want to and then they were showing a picture when when a man mm -hmm. have his shut um off mm -hmm. He doesn't get advances. He doesn't. It's normal. But when a woman do it, just walk with her, with with her breast showing, it's um automatically. Oh, she's a hoe. She's a this and she's a. And that. sometimes they even go further. I say, and she's asking to get yes, she's um, approached asking that to way. Be, yes, and exactly. I ain't gonna lie. I used to think like that too, mm -hmm. because like I don't really like before especially before i wasn't the type of person to show like have my belly out because of my culture and how i was brought up yeah. but regardless of how someone dresses doesn't give you the reason to approach them in that manner as you mentioned even with men too men don't like to be touched like that now like just because they don't have a shirt on and like they have it doesn't mean that they like being approached as uh, that way as well so exactly. it's something that you have to be very mindful of yes. when um approaching people yes. that in their personal space that part asking them for permission yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so boundaries um that is something that is lacking and i think that to vo like it takes courage to voice it because you don't want to offend anybody either <sighs> You don't want to offend anyone, even if they offended you. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 but I, yeah, I guess yeah. so. It depends on your personality. I'm not a comfort confrontational person, mm -hmm. so when it happens to me, I I won't react like that. But you mm -hmm. will see it in my body language. My facial expression will change. Mm -hmm. I would be more like standoffish. But mm -hmm. for me to be like what you said, don't do that nonsense again. Don't, mm -hmm. don't. For, to some extent with certain things but like mm -hmm. that it, it kind of freezes you like mm -hmm. what and you start to think it's be something you did mm -hmm. like we interna internalize how they treat you mm -hmm. but it has nothing to do with them it's a them problem mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but 
It's something that we need to talk about and yes. something that we're talking about now. Yes. So I wanted to make notes because I spoke about the culture in America yeah. and how they're speaking up about it where women rights is concerned mm -hmm. and their rights to their body and to do what they want to mm -hmm. do. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. But I want to bring it back now to the Caribbean. So in the Caribbean, we have a big time celebration that we do that's carnival. Yeah. You know? And from little children to grown adults, they wear basically clothes that are not are very revealing, that are very revealing, yeah. and they also dance a certain way, also with the men. Yeah, you know, and so growing up seeing that you are already desensitizing the way how you do things because it's okay to do it in carnival. Walk up, the, the man ain't asking no permission. The woman walking up, the man decide he gonna pull up his shirt to walk up, and then both are you walking up? You understand? Like that is something that is we grow up seeing, so yeah. it becomes normal. And then, so I grew up actually seeing children encouraged to do. Oh, look at the boy! She could dance. Even me, I know of experiences yeah. where I was a little girl yeah. in school when mm -hmm. we would celebrate the carnival or whatever, mm -hmm. and then I would dance, and then they would encourage. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we have grown up in a culture that desensitized. So then we also have um, a name calling culture. Name calling. It's another name, but I forget the name. But anyhow, um, we are the, the menders. Hi, beautiful cat calling. Cat yes, that's a normal culture. I mean, now it has lessened, yeah. I must say. It is not like before. Mm -hmm. But before, you could just pass and the whole day, they're looking at you behind. They're looking at you like they're literally undressing you with their eyes and then they're approaching you. And I, I've experienced many times, more than once, when you don't respond to them, they it's get upset. Question, yeah. Yeah, they get upset, and so we've created a culture that is that is very um, that it has desensitized the importance of addressing this subject because they've normalized it. Mm -hmm. They've they've normalized this kind of thing, and now I recently saw an article that spoke about. Um, sexual inappropriate sexual behavior now mm -hmm. being um able to be um how you call it like when you're carrying it to the judge prosecuted okay so you are able to be prosecuted if you are doing anything inappropriate sexually mm. that just been introduced on this island of okay. saint martin but i was like okay but we want to address that but we have a bigger issue to address and that is the fact that during carnival we've normalized that kind of behavior so how do you address it you understand i think it's still different though um because for example like if i'm walking on the road and someone peeps me i'm not gonna look back to see who it is mm -hmm. but if i walk down the street and someone says you're beautiful it's two different things so okay. it's like what is how you approach and what you say once you're not being disrespectful and not ogling me i mean I think sometimes there can be a thin line between like something like being up like rude or just com complimenting someone on their look so if you yeah. see someone on the street a good looking guy a good looking woman and you compliment them i think it's understandable but when you go from like let's say i walk in on the street and you want hold like that's not the don't touch me i don't know you don't don't do that but if you see me and it's like okay Hi, you know, you look beautiful. Thank you. And I continue walking. I've got that approach, and I more appreciate that than I get in peeps when I'm walking on the street. We don't do that here. We don't We don't accept it. So um, when prosecuting, I think it'll be, it would have to be something that's, I don't want to say, very inappropriate. You just have to know what it is, or just don't, I don't know. Yeah, so there is a lot of things that needs to be changed. Yeah. I know that one of the things that they're addressing right now mm -hmm is homophobia in the caribbean um there was a whole campaign about it um a couple weeks ago where uh this guy um decided that he's gonna speak out because he's sick and tired of our djs playing homophobic videos that are making them unsafe if they're in the club for example you know so for example we guys know the dance our song bon chi chi man bon fire make the bond you make your own remix so yeah <laughs> 
sorry <laughs> but anyhow and so he was speaking up about it he was like djs when i'm around you guys playing this music i feel unsafe and it was a whole campaign but literally. you know i've i heard about that and i spoke to someone about that situation and i don't really want to dwell on that specific no, topic no. too much to be honest um it's not everyone that feels unsafe when they play that kind of song mm -hmm. um because to i feel like back then homophobia was even bigger in St. Martin than it is today. Yeah. You know, like, I remember going in high school where people used to get beat up after school just because, yes. you know, but now, I I haven't, I'm not, so I don't know what their walk looks like or how their daily life is, like, mm -hmm. um, being discriminated against and whatnot, but I don't know if it's something that is as Again, you have to be very careful when you're talking about these topics. No, but I don't know if it's um as trauma. Mm, if they're if if they go through the same thing that they used to back then, I feel like now people, everyone is living their lives and not really focused on whether or not you're homo, um homosexual or not. Like mm -hmm. you come to the club, people don't tell you. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know, so I don't. I can't. I can't talk about that yeah, part. Exactly. So no, but I just wanted to say that we are right now. The focus is on that, like dealing with that subject. I have not seen much activism mm. when it comes to sexual harassment against mm. women. Mm. I think we are still focusing on sexual, ab um, not sexual abuse, but violence against women. Mm. That is something that is spoken more about than sexual harassment and really standing up and really trying to um, speak up about it and, and giving us tools, especially young girls. So that I haven't really seen. Like I know there is girl power, etc., etc. Okay. But um, that is something that I have not been seeing vocalized much. So that's what I wanted to see. I, I agree with you and I think and I also want to talk about not just the women too. Like I really want to focus on men not being comfortable enough to even talk about things like that because if they were to talk about, I don't want you to touch me like that. I don't want you to be feeling me up like that. You're going to be like, oh, what happened to you? You're a gay man. You know, like Caribbean people, we straight up to say, it's women too. Like we're we're at fault if uh, we approach a guy inappropriately and they don't like it. We automatically think that they're um, homosexual. And it's I've true. had guys speak to me about things like that. It's like true. if they were to talk about it, well, of course, like women going to approach him or watch them or say certain things, and we think it's okay for us to speak to them like that. Like that. The same way it affects us, it affects them too. So even exactly. when you're approaching men. Like be mindful of their personal space. The same way you want people to be mindful about you, the same way you should, the same, keep the same energy when you're approaching other people. Also, so although I guess we also have gotten, not I guess, we have also gotten on very comfortable with approaching guys how we want. It's true. Let's, it's let's true. be honest. Let like me, we, we do it, we see, oh, you have a nice, it's true. We do it and we're thinking, okay, it's, it's okay. It's true. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. guilty of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, We've learned a lesson and but, we're yeah. doing better. And we also have to talk about topics like that because, of course, for us, it's been normalized. It, it was normalized. It's like for us to bring that conversation forward mm -hmm. and bring awareness to it because if yeah. you don't know then you'll just be walking and doing it and people exactly and i like i, I, I want to share this because yeah um when a woman say no is no okay guys like really and truly it is not no with a giggle even if she giggling no protect is yourself no. when it comes to that yeah. no is no because literally men feel when a woman say no is as this something does trigger them or does a, i don't know what it if, is i don't know if it's the hunting thing in but them but they just just go go even more they take it as a challenge it's not a and challenge it is not a challenge no is no but with that same energy if a guy tell you no no is no no serious no is no no I, <laughs> no for real no is no and you have to learn to have that self-control and respect 
A woman, hmm, I can't say, well, I can't speak for every w woman, but it's hard for them to take a no to one. It, it is. Just as just as men, it's hard for them. Like, why you, why you happen to you? Why, you you're not in the mood? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just don't want to have sexual intercourse. It's okay. It's okay. You know, sometimes you're not it in the okay. mood, it's fine. It's okay. You know? And rejection is something nobody don't like to feel. Truth. But, the truth. It, but it is an internal work that you have to do. Yes. You know, because... Once you know, and I'm going to go back to my favorite topic, Christ. <laughs> Once you know that you are accepted and loved by God, yeah. like, there is nothing, like, you have, to, I can't say because we are human, so I'm going to act perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're going to feel rejected, yeah. okay? However, you have to affirm yourself mm -hmm. in that point to switch your thought pattern, you yeah, understand? Yeah, yeah. So don't dwell on it, but combat it. Tell yourself so. So speak affirmations over your life. And but when it happens right then and there, that's not what you're thinking about, though. No. So that that's something that you need to Practice, work on. Yes. And so because re rejection, Practice. one thing I've noticed is something that's deeply rooted. Yes, and yes. I know I've struggled with that as well. And I know that stems off from childhood stuff. A lot of things that we're dealing with nowadays is things that we went through when we were a child yeah so yeah. like rejection of course you're going to take it personal yes at that point of time you're not trying to figure out oh why he don't want or what she don't want you you feel rejected oh they don't want me period i don't understand why they don't want me or whatever the mindset might look like for you but um you go through your feelings you you feel rejected but don't stay there no you know don't stay there as um jackie mentioned you are loved by god like it should be enough. Yeah, it and I and also too like sometimes I don't think that everyone understand what it is to be loved by God. It can sound like oh they're just talking, but when you know that God loves you and regardless, nobody could ever, 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 ever love you the way God loves you. That's yes, on yes. period, that's yeah. on like your family, your mother, your wife, your children yeah, yeah. could never love you the way that God loves you yes. and I pray that one day uh, if you already experienced that we thank God for that but I pray that one day you get to experience God's love because no. that's that I can't find any words but it's just it's just that feeling of acceptance even when you're not perfect like he loves you with all your flaws and all you know your friends and your family they're going to find a reason but what are you doing that for but God nah it's okay come here it's, yeah no for real yeah and even if it's not physical because a lot of us just still miss that physical touch or that physical you know but it is something spiritual and you 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 just have to be honest enough and ask god to fill the voids that you're feeling yeah. you know just be transparent and open with him and he vulnerable. will do the work be vulnerable with him yes. and he will do the work yes. trust me and the work doesn't happen in one two three it yeah. happens gradually and sometimes you're triggered and you have to go back there but life is work is a progress it's it's a process it's a process that's the word it's a process and, and a progress and you you have to be willing to put in the work in order for you to see the growth you know like it's not just gonna happen overnight so have patience with yourself yes. so we're already transitioned but um i think that's how we're gonna end this video so but i have a question though because, i guess not <laughs> yeah no because you uh, mentioned in the beginning you know not knowing how to respond oh, and not yeah. knowing how to react mm -hmm. so i think that we should at the end try to give our opinion on how we could do it the next time when facing a situation like that so True. what so what would you do if faced with a situation like that how will you right set your now boundaries? i'm trying to be more vocal when it comes to it mm -hmm. and of course my facial expression if any if, if anyone knows my facial expression does say a lot and usually i just bank on that and i just remove myself but i want to be more vocal when it comes to that not rude i don't like being rude i don't like that kind of i'm not that person i try not to be at least so be more vocal about it okay what you're saying is inappropriate don't do that like be, the point blank period why are you so serious is no you have boundaries and this is my boundaries and you have to respect it yeah. it's not that i'm mad at you it's not that i'm i'm gonna hold you too hard but you will know this is my standard and you will respect it yeah. and that's the mindset that i'm working on having 
because I'm so used to being silent and just accepting it and we're I'm trying not to do that anymore so that's one thing that I'm working on and yes. talking about it that's another step too yes and I think that um, also we've have we also have this culture in the Caribbean to respect your elders you know mm. so if it's an elderly person or older person doing things inappropriate the quicker would stay silent mm -hmm. to de because we don't want to seem disrespectful even when we are in our right you understand mm -hmm. and so i think i mean i don't know most probably that's an assumption but i i personally have experienced it i see they're having a thinking like mm -hmm. yeah i'm going to say something you know mm -hmm. that <laughs> yeah go, go ahead but i the elderly yes but also the young people too mm -hmm. because if you say something and maybe like well, why are you so stuck up well, you don't just relax True. you know so True. it can be bo both ways but True. regardless of what it is you should speak up yes it's not easy trust me it, it's gonna take work but you have to take care of yourself yes so you have to set your boundaries and have people um respect, respect it. it yes i i was trying as i'm saying it i'm, rem I'm remembering when you don't set your boundaries and you just leave allow people to come through is you as at is you're the one that is at a disadvantage yes. that was a difficult sentence to say <laughs> Whoa. but setting your boundaries benefits you yes. you know you say keeping yourself yourself um safeguarded so and that's self-love yes that is that is part of self-love if you want to love yourself set proper boundaries and i know i have a struggle with it i i, I have a struggle with also respecting other people's boundaries people pleasing too could allow you to just oh i don't want to hurt their feelings while yes. they're you feeling uncomfortable but you don't want to hurt their feelings yep. that don't make yep. sense yeah 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 so, so yeah you have to find the right balance it's not that you being selfish it's being smart to be yes, honest exactly and i agree i don't think that i have anything else to add when it comes to um giving advice on you know what to do it's simple just speak up yeah be respectful yeah but also be assertive mm -hmm. and don't be afraid. Don't mm -hmm. think about, yeah, but then they don't like me. That's it's, their business. Exactly. That then, it doesn't mean that you hate them, but that's their business. Yes. If they can't respect it, that's exactly. okay. Exactly. Not everyone will respect it. They don't, they don't need to be in your circle. Exactly. They don't need to be in your environment. They don't respect your boundaries. Exactly. Wonders. Period. Okay. And that's on period. <laughs> and with that being said, you have any last things to say? Uh, I do want to thank you. Jackie for joining us today. No I just dropped I the topic. This. Yeah, I, I just dropped the trap the, the topic on her without even telling her what it was and it flowed and I thank God yeah. for this opportunity. I do look forward to having more of these yes. kind of topics on my it. channel. I love it. I love it. So do go and follow Jackie on her Instagram and uh, Jackie Honesty. Yes, I'm gonna have it somewhere down here over here by her so okay. and you can go and follow her on instagram she as i said is very vulnerable and she's very open to sharing her story so if anything that she may have talked about and you are interested in speaking to her about it she will be like she'll talk i want to say everything because i try to say more on this topic i know it's, it's just I, very sensitive you have so. to know what it is that exactly. you gotta speak about and i know exactly it, yeah so thank you guys for watching our well our channel but this video mm -hmm. and i hope you guys please leave a comment like share and let me know your thoughts on what we spoke about and have a blessed and a wonderful day bye, bye. <laughs>